Welcome to an introduction to voting. In this lesson, we will define a preference ballot and a preference table, and also create a preference table. But before we do this, let's discuss some of the issues that can arise when selecting a winner of an election. Sometimes voting is more involved than just electing who gets the most votes. There are several methods for determining a winner of an election. A certain method for selecting a winner may be more appropriate based upon the type of election. For example, the method of electing a president fairly might be different than a group of friends fairly deciding what movie to watch. Let's consider an example to see why issues can arise when selecting winners of elections. Let's begin by considering the following results from a student body presidential election. Notice how the candidates are listed in the first row from A through E, and the second row tells us the number of first place votes. Notice if we add the second row, this tells us there are a total of 450 votes. And since candidate E has the most votes at 102, E should win, right? Well, notice that in order to have a majority of more than 50 percent, somebody would have to have more than 225 votes. And notice that no candidate here even comes close to having a majority of the votes. Now let's assume that the voters rank the candidates from their first choice through their fifth choice. And here are the results, and this is called a preference table, which we'll define in just a moment. If we focus on candidate E for a moment, notice how except for the 102 who voted E as their first choice, most voters really seem to dislike the candidate because candidate E is ranked fifth for everyone else. If we compare candidate E to candidate B, notice how 98 people voted B as their first choice, only four less than E, but everyone else that didn't vote B first ranked B second. So we could say that B is not disliked by anybody, so maybe that means that B should win. It's situations like these that lead to interesting discussions about voting theory and voting methods. And in this series of videos, we'll be discussing various voting methods but for this introductory video, let's begin by defining a preference ballot and a preference schedule or preference table. A preference ballot is a ballot in which the voters rank the choices in order of preference. And a preference schedule or table is when these individual ballots are typically combined into one preference schedule or table, which shows the number of voters in the top row that voted for each option. Let's take a look at an example. A college surveys students about a possible new design for their website. The three sites are labeled A, B, and C, and the individual ballots are shown below. So these ballots here would be called the preference ballots. Notice how the ballots rank the choices from first through third. We're first asked how many students voted. We'll notice how we have three rows of seven, so we can say that 21 students voted. And then from these ballots, we can create a preference table where we'll list the choices from first through third, then the number of voters in the first row that voted for each order. And since there are three choices, there are a total of three factorial, or six possible orders of preference. We can also use a counting principle and say there are three options for the first choice, two options for the second choice, and one option for the third choice, giving us a total of six different orders for the choices. Let's begin by listing the six possible orders. So if we start with A, B, C, let's now list A, C, B. Now let's start with B, so we could have B, A, C, and then B, C, A. And now we'll start with C, we could have C, A, B, and then C, B, A. And now we'll count the number of votes for each particular order. Let's begin by looking for the order of A, B, C. There's one, two, three, four, and five. Now we'll look for A, C, B. There's one, two, three, so there's three voters for the order of A, C, B. 
Now we'll look for BAC. There's one, two. Looks like there's only two. And now we'll look for BCA. There's one, two, three, and four. Now we'll look for CAB. There's one, two, three, so a total of three, which leaves one, two, three, four that voted for CBA. Now to make sure we didn't miss any, let's go ahead and find this sum to make sure the sum is 21. So we have five plus three plus two, that's 10, plus four plus three plus four, which is 21. So again, these are the preference ballots and this is the preference table. So based upon the voting method, we would normally use this preference table here to gather the information needed to select the winner. I hope you found this introduction helpful.